Welcome to the second video in our series on the process of arcade ROM hacking with the Texas Nerd House, y'all. In our first video, we went over the tools involved with making a ROM hack from scratch, how to get MAME to run your ROM hack without complaining, and how to figure out which ROM in the game does what, either by modifying it or by simply looking up its name in GitHub. Now for this video, let's discover how the background tile graphics are encoded inside the graphics ROMs. You'll learn exactly how to make a background tile show anything you want to inside the Tapper game by using techniques to extrapolate to other games using different graphics encodings. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Text Nerd House and hit that notification bell so that you stay abreast of our future videos and also leave your questions and thoughts on this material in the comments section. So let's actually take a look at what this looks like in person. And now you can see that on BG1, we're finding a lot of 058F or 5AF. And then on here, seeing bigger swaths of 05AF. And then as you go back into MAME, all right, so basically as we on, actually maybe, yes, yeah, hit F4, hit Enter, and uh, hit Enter again, tile map, here's your palette. So actually, let's look at the tile map one more time. So now what you're seeing, is essentially these colors. The tiles are completely up here on the top row. The first 16 tiles are just solid colors. And then eventually, once you get down to tile number 16 or 10 in hexadecimal, you start to see this strange pattern come into play. And lo and behold, once we get down to, I think, tile address 160, yeah, you'll start to see where things start to you know jam out a little bit more. So tile address. Actually, it's, sorry, it's tile address 10 hex, and so it's 100 hex. So if we spread these out a little bit so that it's uh, essentially up on the 10th line, 1, 2, uh, the 16th line, 4, 8, 12, 16, you can start to see there's the emergence of a, of a distinctly different pattern than what you found in the first ones. And as I expand this one out too, you can start to see kind of something similar emerging. The numbers look quite similar. So I suppose... Why don't we start to just mess with these things a little bit? So we can try like a one one two two three three four four five five six six seven seven eight eight six seven seven, and then just for the heck of it, let's try one two three five six eight nine a b c d e f, and then I've forgotten zero. So maybe I'll do the same thing on the other side, but maybe I'll just do every other one. So here's two two four four six six. Made a typo. Okay. And then we'll go with uh, 1, 2, 5, 6, 9A. Okay. So then I'll save both of these, save both, save both. Now I'll basically restart MAME and we pop back into the command prompt. I'll just restart MAME like this and hit enter, enter, hit F10 to speed up the ROM loading, hit F4, and I'll increase the size of the window, assuming it lets me, there we go. I can enter, 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 enter. Ah, yes, yeah, so now you see we messed with that first tile quite a bit. Now we can hit the minus sign, you can actually blow that up quite a bit, and you can see the differences. Now you can see there's kind of like four colors going on if you really squint. So there's a couple of shades of red and a couple of shades of blue. Now you can see we activated a lot of different colors on this tile. And note how the main tile viewer will show you what the color value is up on the top. This value corresponds with the number from the active color palette, of which on this game there are 16 active colors at a time. Actually, it looks like we may have gotten even more than four, than more than what we bargained for. So let's go on and actually discuss what this format looks like. In the graphic on screen, we put the game's color palette on top, and tap BG1 in the center next to MAME on the bottom right. Focus on the first two colors on the palette and then the first two bytes of the ROM. Basically, for this game, by messing with the bits in the hex editor, we learned that each ROM represents different data within the same 8x8 tile. Now let's add in the ROM tap BG0 to the left next to tab BG1. 
We edited the same location in both ROMs, and yet the colors changed in the same tile, and not in different tiles. We also learned that when you change the numbers in one ROM, you affect the color on up to 4 pixels for each byte you change, meaning that every pixel is represented by 2 bits in each ROM. Let's study a bit of hexadecimal real fast, since squishing 2 pixels into one hexadecimal digit and 4 pixels into a byte makes the numbers look really strange. Each half byte digit in this conversion chart represents 2 pixels. The left pixel's color is encoded by the left 2 bits, and the right pixel in each pair is encoded by the right 2 bits. As such, the magnitude of the numbers in the hex editor will largely be affected by the left pixel, and it will be hard to get a good sense for what's in the pixel on the right and what's really in the picture altogether. In any event, to find the hexadecimal number for each pair of pixels, multiply the left pixel's color index by 4, then add the right pixel's color index. If you don't understand how this works, then just carefully study this conversion chart and look for patterns in how each pixel counts its color up to 4. Especially notice how the left bits count up in groups of 4. Anyway, in Tapper, we are lucky that as you write into the hex editor from left to right, and then top to bottom, it also modifies the tile artwork in the same direction, just like how we read and write in English. It's easier to visualize when you shrink Hexplorer to show just 2 bytes per row, because 2 bytes represents 8 pixels. Then every 8 rows in Hexplorer is a complete 8x8 tile, and wherever you make the edits is where they'll show up in the tile. Other games encode pixels differently. Some start at the bottom right and work their way upward and then left as you write normally into a hex editor. Still others have completely arbitrary seeming encoding schemes that try and milk every last bit of performance from the hardware. This is why you should edit slowly and carefully if you're not familiar with the platform. Anyway, recall that in base 2, the binary counting system, you can represent the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3 within two binary digits, or bits. Two digits of base 10 lets you encode numbers between 0 and 99. 10 to the second power is 100, so it makes sense when you think of 2 to the second power being 4. Don't forget this, it's very important. The number 4 is about to come up a lot. In ROM tap BG1, you can only access 4 contiguous colors from the active color palette. See how this works. By changing data in the tap BG1 ROM to represent 0, 1, 2, and 3, each pixel takes 2 bits so you can make the change within 8 bits or 1 byte. Note that as we look across the changes manifested in the actual graphic, you can see we've only exposed four colors, in fact, four contiguous colors from the color palette. Even if we fill the entire tile with this pattern, all we will in fact see is stripes of the same four colors. It is only when we begin to modify tap BG0 that you can gain access to the other sets of four colors from the active palette. Tap BG0 indicates which group of four colors can be selected from. I like to call this the major palette because it exposes you to the choice of all 16 available colors by allowing you to choose the color group. You must modify tap BG0 with 0, 1, 2, or 3 for the desired pixel to indicate which group of 4 colors you wish to use for that pixel, and then modify tap BG1 for the same pixel to specify exactly which of the 4 colors to use. I like to call tap BG1 the minor palette because you can only select up to 4 colors from it, the four colors being the ones defined in the group designated by the choice of major palette. Now what can all the zeros, fives, a's, and f's at the beginning of the ROM tell us? Think of what values those hexadecimal numbers are in binary. Zero is 0000, zero, zero, zero. five is 0101, zero, one, zero, one. a is 1010, zero, one, zero. and f is 1111. These hexadecimal numbers indicate repeating a color, or choice of major palette, for two pixels, and you can see the progression of counting to 4 in binary on either side of these numbers, 00, 01, 10, and 11. Since 2 bits makes a pixel, repeating colors over 2 pixels yields 0, 5, A, and F in hex depending on what color or major palette you want, and so seeing a lot of repeating 0s, 5s, As, and Fs means there is a big swath of solid color. One question you may have is, how does one switch the active palette? Well, we'll cover that later when we talk about the game's tile map. Note that the encoding scheme of data in the tile is not at all generalized to old arcade games, but in fact specific to Tapper and other games written for the Bally MCR3 platform. Anyway, just some caution that other systems encode tiles differently, so you should be prepared to utilize the logic described just now when exploring what changes are made when you edit the background ROMs. Nevertheless, the Bally MCR3 style of encoding described here 
also has the interesting property that the address of each tile in the ROM happens to be the tile address, in hexadecimal of course, plus a zero at the end. In other words, the tile's address in ROM is simply the tile's number shifted left by four bits. At least the beauty of finding any given tile in ROM should make you smile, even if the process of editing that tile as you see fit might be more tedious. You were just editing single tiles, right? Well, not the idea was, um, it was not necessarily single tiles. Well, you probably won't know exactly how much you're editing until you write in a hexadecimal pattern into the hex editor and see exactly what it affects. It could be just a few pixels on one tile, a whole tile, or more than a whole tile. By making the patterns, you deduce exactly how many hexadecimal numbers are in a tile, and then which bits of each hexadecimal number go along with which pixels and which colors. But anyway, here's how I answered it originally. But yes, the background tiles in particular, that's what I was editing. And so the idea there was by sticking in code, you can essentially see kind of what colors pop up in the background tiles. And this will help you deduce the encoding of the tiles. Like how are the pixels arranged in the ROM? Like does it store a couple of pixels? Um, like pixel one, two, three, four being different bits or is it actually encoding a whole color inside of several bits at once? How are you determining which group? So essentially, the group is determined by the ones at right. So the, pix the, 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 the hex pattern is showing it right with the zeros, the fives, the a's, and the f's. So remember the, you know, what a five means. It means that you're having two groups of zero, one. Mm -hmm. And so the zero, one group is those colors four, five, six, and seven. And so from within the colors four, five, six, and seven, then the um, numbers that are shown at the left side, they're determining exactly which one it is. Is it color number four, five, six, or seven? See, I don't get where you're getting that from. I mean... Well, you get that from basically experimenting with editing that ROM file and seeing how the colors arrange themselves. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it's just a matter of getting into the ROMs and tweaking things. And, you know, just playing with the numbers until things start to make sense to you and thinking about um, the hexadecimal representation of the bit or the nibble or the byte. And then seeing, well, if I change this to be, you know, all ones, well, one is going to have a bunch of zeros in it from the hexadecimal perspective. So is this going to matter or is it not going to matter? Yeah, I got you. I got to get my mind out of RGB and, uh, <laughs> and the <clears throat> ASCII, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is all different because now uh, we're... Yeah. <laughs> we're definitely not dealing with RGB here. It's, you know, palettes, palette colors that were predefined to an index. So it's like old school, you know, 256 color bitmaps where you might have had, you know, true color representation of 16 million colors, but you can only represent 256 at a time. And so, you know, choose which ones will represent themselves in the palette. And then, you know, as such, you'll follow through with that, uh, that approach. So, so I can set my own custom palette? Certainly. Yeah. So these palette colors that are down here, are defined through code. Now, I haven't had the need to mess with this ever, but if you were to find out exactly where they're being set, and they do get set for sure, because as you're booting the game, you can right. actually watch the palette colors change over time. Okay, cool. So I just go down, I could go down to the EEPROM for the boot record. Got it. Yeah, definitely. So you can go down, set a breakpoint for something that appears to be changing the palette RAM, and then um, find out what code it is, and then you know figure out where it's looking in memory for that ROM color, and then just change that ROM color. So anyway, we determined as well is that each of these tiles is 64 pixels. So it's eight by eight, and that also each tile offset is indicated in the ROM by zero by 10. So in other words, tile number 10 hex is gonna be at address number 100 hex. And this is really cool because it makes the arithmetic really easy because all you have to do is just shift it up by four bits to get to the, the tile address in the hex. And because it's coming from two different ROMs, it's basically have now come up with an aliasing technique in the hardware where from two different chips you can get data relative to the same address and you can essentially double your bandwidth coming from the system. So that becomes really useful as a way to eke out the performance from the hardware in an era where regular old PCs are just showing C colon backslash on a green screen monitor. So you know some pretty advanced hardware techniques were having to come to play to get these kind of things done. Well, that's a lot of information about background tiles, right? No, not really, because there's more. We still need to cover rearranging background tiles during gameplay, and for Tapper, this also involves heavy use of the MAME debugger. Stay tuned for part three, where we deep dive into more highly technical reverse engineering of game logic. 
Videos Beyond Part 3 summarize numerous advanced debugging concepts and strange things you might encounter, and then we'll present tools and tool chains that'll save you from having to get a master's degree in computer engineering in order to modify your games. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next videos in the process of arcade ROM hacking series. Bye y'all!